This is Christopher James, and today we are talking with Peter Gossamer over at Silver Dollar City. And hello, Peter. Hello, Christopher. Good to see you again. Thank you. It's good to yeah. be here. We worked to together a long time ago. We see. did. It was, uh, oh, jeez. You know, I'm surprised that you're here because we met in New Jersey or New York in the Catskills. Uh-huh. Woodlock, I Woodlock think. Woodlock Pines, and you were living in Pittsburgh, right? No, in Ohio. You're oh, close. Where yeah. about in Ohio? Mm-hmm. Youngstown area. Oh, Cleet my God. Canfield. I grew up in Medina. I went to school at Kent State. Oh, really? I yeah. went to school at Kent State. Did you really? Yeah, I went to Youngstown State for my undergraduate, then went to Kent State. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. And I worked over at the... Uh, did you ever go to Akron at the airport for the 356th fighter group? No. Mm-mm. Oh, it was awesome. What it was, was like a World War II themed restaurant. You go in, the walls were sandbags. Oh, by the airport. And yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get the... Uh, the uh, the input from the pilots talking and uh, uh-huh. the landings and things well, like that. Well, they stopped that after the 9-11 uh, thing. But, okay. yeah, we'd go over and uh, we would I would do the table magic, which I hated. I did uh, magic tabletop at the top of the inn in Kent State. There was mm-hmm. a tall hotel there downtown. The very top was called Top of the Inn. And I took over from a magician that had graduated named Johnny, um, uh, Johnny Kaplan. Mm-hmm. And then when I left, I turned it over to Johnny Ace Palmer, oh, yeah. who later went on to win FISM, and he still does close-up at the Magic Castle every single week. Mm-hmm. Did you ever know about Johnny? Well, they talked about him all the time at our Magic uh, meetings, at oh. the ring thing, because he was part of our Youngstown ring, I guess. Yeah. You know, another funny story about Kent State, um, it was a Delta Ta Delta, or it was a, it was a fraternity, and they said, can you do a rush party for us? And I, I didn't even know what it was. It's basically we're trying to get people to come to the party and stuff like that. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll do, I'll do anything. And they said, we're getting, you're going to be on the front porch. We're going to have a front porch. And then we're going to have the people out in the yard. And um, we're going to call it Laugh Until You Disappear. Because mm-hmm. we're going to have a magician to close the show, but we're going to have uh, a comedian open it. And I had just gotten back from a place called Chavez College in California where they teach a sleight of hand. And it's no longer around, but it was the only thing. Is that, that the one where you had to do the little pose? Exactly. The, yeah. So um, <laughs> I, I, I went to one quarter at Kent State, and then I left in 70, 77, 78, and then uh, it was 78. And then I went out there, and because I had been in California, they said, local comedian opens for world-renowned magician Peter Gossamer. And it was called Laugh Until You Disappear. And then years later, my friend that booked me for that, we, we ran into each other and he says, do you know who that guy was that opened for you? And I said, who? And he says, that was Drew Carey. Oh, that's I says, cool. I remember him as kind of like a Dilbert looking guy. And he says, yeah, he was going to school then. And, uh, you know, he's a big Cleveland fan anyways. Mm-hmm. And I said, yeah. And I said, I remember that. And I said, that is so ironic that now he's world known and I am, you know, doing my thing. And that thing read that day. It didn't even give him credit for his name. It just says, right. local comedian opens for world class, world renowned magician. Peter Gossman. <laughs> and here he is now, yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah. Price is Right and all that stuff. I know, I know. Incredible. He has had his ups and downs, too. Mm-hmm. I was heard that... he was living in his car for a while, and he's a lot of stories. But that was 20 years ago, and now he's just gone from the Drew Carey show, uh-huh. the Price is Right, and uh, what's the other one called? Uh, what's My Line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a house, like outside of Youngstown. I remember everybody uh, making a big deal when he built a house there, because he would come back and stay. And oh, good. Him and Mike Tyson had really? a house out there. Yeah. That's funny. It's pretty crazy, but... <clears throat> So you got started uh, doing restaurants, or well, I I guess I did. You know, no, actually, no, I didn't. I started out um, gathering up enough of a of a routine that I could do maybe forty five minutes. Uh-huh. It would be blue and gold banquets, oh, I did uh, that. church basements, birthday parties, and, and I was really always nervous. But I I don't I still am today. But I don't think I got into it for the show business. I kind of got into it to kind of pay for my habit, which was I love the gadgets, I love the gimmicks, I love right. the things that you know slipped up your sleeve or or were, were so precisely done, you know, like folding coins and things like that. And I just love that. And it was the closest thing I could find, like being a spy. You know, right, me too. That's agent. what I always and said. And so that's what I wanted. I just wanted more of that. And in the end, I had enough to do a show, so I started to do it. And every time I would do a county fair or a backyard and it was just oh i can't believe i'm doing this and then mm-hmm. i just kept doing it doing it when i was in college i was doing um uh working in illusions so i had the typical zigzag sub trunk broom suspension which is your you know your ship act as we yeah. say and then um 
got out of there and then went right onto the ships and I worked um, when shipping was only known on the low boat and people were starting out. I went in with Carnival when they had three ships, three ships mm -hmm. in the fleet, and now they have like four or five different companies and they also have probably a hundred and some ships, but um, that was back when it was small. And, yeah. um, and I stayed there and then I became a cruise director my third year in and then I stayed in the administration for Carnival for two or three years after that and then I put it all behind me and then they called me a year later a different company but my same ship supervisor because he was not entertainment director he says do you want to come on to Royal Caribbean I says I don't want to do all that administration he says no 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 administration no morning talks no debarkation embarkation yeah, yeah. shop talk it's, all you do is you just show up and you do your, your show and I says how many times a week he says like twice a week you know the, a little nip at the front of the week and then mm -hmm. you're 45 and you're done I go that's crazy and then so I started doing that but I still do that in January and February. I still think it's crazy. I'm yeah. like, they have me come on to do... Uh, to exact ports, yeah. Yeah, and so they have me come in. And I think now with uh, Princess, they want like 35, 40 minutes, like once a cruise. Once yeah. or twice a cruise. Are, it's like are crazy. they still in th doing three a night? No, I think they got away from that. Because they switched from... I used to do 250s, 250 minutes. And then they switched. They said, we're going to start doing three 30-minute shows. And I was on the test ship, and it was a disaster. Did like, they ever have they you do the atrium show? The what? Atrium show. I volunteered once and did one, but it's really they, they hard. Call, they call it the Piazza, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I had trouble with that because I'm not a silent performer. Uh -huh. And it's easy if you're a juggler because you can get the height and, you know, even mine. But it was just goofy. I mean, I was trying to do a toss-out deck to the second level, you yeah. know, and then toss it back to me and then doing like a, a card stab. And, and at the end, it was fine. I got my 15 minutes in, but uh, yeah. it, it was a challenge. I did it one time, and I said never again. Because there's people all around you, and you're trying to play to everybody around the whole it's room. It's like doing a circus. It's, it's like yeah. doing a halftime show. It's like... It's it's hard. Well, you've and, been you've been in situations where they say we got to corporate, and there's your spot, and it's like a, a dance floor, and the room is long, uh -huh. and you've got people to the long side of your right, long side of your left, and maybe twenty people in front of you, and then you've got an open cash bar down there, and it's it's difficult. Yeah. You can't work that you, way. You've done Princess, right? Quite a bit. Um, have you ever done the Vista Lounge? No. Oh, it's at the back of the ship, tiny little stage, literally three foot uh -huh. wide in front of the curtain there. And there's people all around it. You're like in the center. And I actually so, have done that. I know what you're Yeah, and they have the big pillars in the middle of the room. Of course they do. Because it's made for karaoke or a singer. Yeah. And so they put me, usually I do eight weeks on the same ship. Mm -hmm. So I'm on there last year in the, in the Vista. And I said, people keep complaining they can't see the show. Mm -hmm. Well, they said, do bigger things. I go, no, it's not me. It's like, you have giant pillars in the yeah. way. Yeah. So I finally got moved. But it's like the worst place yeah. to do it. I got that complaint, too. But they were complaining because they could see the show. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've seen the show. <laughs> I, I, totally, I remember when we were in Woodlock Pines, which was a very interesting place to work. Do you yeah. still do those? No, I haven't done. I, it's hard for me to take a call for a one-nighter anymore. They come yeah. at the last minute. Like, Joey will say, you want to come in next Sunday, the Woodlock? And I go, you know, no, I'm sorry. But, and, and I don't mean to be dishonest, but... I really don't like to drive up four and a half hours, mm -hmm. unload and do it, and then pack up for another hour and a half and then drive back. It's really a 10 hour day. Yeah. And so I have a friend that does that all the time and he enjoys it. I remember when I was doing it though, and you, were, I, you and I were on the same night and I remember you setting up all of your illusions. And I think you or somebody made the comment that it was taking forever to set up one illusion. Mm -hmm. That I'm walking out with a deck of cards and <laughs> playing yes. and and a piece cool. of rope. I know. I'm the drummer. I'm the drummer in the band. And you are the singer with a microphone. I just, uh, I've never gotten away from it. But now that's the same reason I don't do one nighters. Mm -hmm. like I, when, I'm, when I'm here, I set up and it's good for eight, six, eight weeks. Right. Uh, and if I do a one nighter, it's usually for corporate. And they say, we're going to get you in the night before. You got all morning set up. We'll do a sound and lights around four o'clock. Then the room opens at seven, and then, you know, you're you're through. But yeah, those are far and few between as well. Yeah, yeah, I don't really care for that either. I would rather. I've been here for eleven years. I do my show oh, twice so a day. People are like, big. "Hey, come to Kansas. Drive to Louisiana to do a one night." I'm like, "Ah, it's okay. Yeah, that's yeah. all right." I don't. Every once in a while, it's like it's, it, it, it sounds really attractive. It's like it's a group of uh, young professionals, and we're gonna fly you in. It's a spa, so if your wife wants to do that, and uh -huh. we're gonna cover everything. And sometimes it's real cushy. But then the more they are like that, the more pressure there is to supply what they want. Yeah, yeah. You have to try. Yeah, sometimes. 
sometimes <laughs> sometimes it's easy to do a county fair uh -huh. and be in the corner someplace and you know just have a, a gazebo or something like that and because people aren't coming to the fair to see you you were a pleasant to surprise uh -huh. afterwards but you're not the destination so they didn't just you know go out to las vegas and pay uh 50 to 100 hours to see this magician and then you got to deliver it's basically just like here at the silver dollar city they didn't come here to see me they they came here to have a day with the family and you know if they they see the show they're pleasantly surprised and, mm -hmm. and it works out so yeah see i've been asked here in branson you've been here quite a while i mean pretty much every summer uh, ten years. on and off for yeah, 10 years yeah eight nine and ten and then uh -huh. that was the last time we were here in 2010 so this is our first year back. oh really it's yeah. been that long yeah i guess the last time i saw you was like at whitewater floating around in the you know <laughs> i saw you time. since you're on the show but we went in a couple years ago and that must have uh -huh. been just when they started doing uh the two shows because you said some, you said that there was another magician in the day and then you uh -huh, were in the night, uh -huh. right? yeah but um working here is uh, really unique working in branson it's, oh it's very God. very different but it kind of reminds me sometimes of like the county fairs and stuff i get asked all the time do you want to do your own show i've had people contact me wanting to back a show mm -hmm. for me to do that and i'm like no way mm -hmm. like not in this town because then like you're saying people would be coming to see the christopher james show yeah where now they're coming out to the showboat i'm part of it there's not as much. You pressure. just show up. Yeah. And and uh, the same. I mean, we went to see the Haygoods uh, two nights ago. We saw six the night before that. Uh -huh. You see a lot of local guys, and I'm thinking, you know, it's they, they they're my favorite acts. I mean, all these guys in town. There, I love six. I love Haygoods. And I, and I'm thinking, boy, wouldn't that be nice to have a theater? But then I have to look at the other side. It's like some of these guys. Uh, I know a magician in town. He's does his guerrilla marketing he goes out in the morning to the pancake yeah, yeah. places and then if you own your own theater you got to be responsible to make sure the lines are in the parking lot and the marquee sign the, the letters fell off last night and do uh -huh. we have enough oil for the popcorn it's like restrooms yeah, clean yeah, like yeah exactly the so there is a, there's a great side to being in branson and also not having your theater and but i understand yeah. the control side too i mean if you if you really want it, a lot of people desire that but i i uh, i admire them so much for doing that but but working at silver dollar city i mean do you, ha you have freedom to mm -hmm. do pretty much what you want i mean you're smart you know what not to do mm -hmm. <laughs> in yeah. branson versus uh yeah. when we were in catskills and yeah yeah and you know i just try to be a good person inside so people always ask me they said you know what what's what kind of um encouragement what kind of tips can you give me i said listen don't try to be a great act for magicians be a great act for everybody just mm -hmm. lay on his and be a great person backstage mm -hmm. before the show after the show because normally if you can be a great act and but not that friendly of a person you might work magicians conventions and you might do tv spots every once in a while but if you're a, a good act and a good person you work a lot more you do right. it all right right and speaking of magicians uh when magicians come to your show mm -hmm. I can't stand it when they come to mind, to tell you the truth, because I, I do what you're saying. Like, I play to the audience, mm -hmm. and they always give me advice on, oh, you should do this move, or you should do that. I'm like, great, but what I'm doing is working, yeah. you know? Um, so I don't really do conventions and stuff anymore. I always say magicians don't like me, because <laughs> in my showboat show, I do two tricks in the whole show, basically. Everything else is comedy, and so I get a lot of flack for that when magicians see it. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, cut out the comedy. Do I more. like that routine you do with the guy that walks across the audience. That yeah? Brilliant. I retired that. Too many people had seen it. Brilliant, though. But there's a new version <clears throat> that's coming out, so... Uh, mm -hmm. But, yeah, that was a lot of work, so... Yeah, I know. It was nice the way you set it up, too. Mm -hmm. Very now, subtle. You know, I used to hate it when magicians come, but now anymore, it's just kind of like... Uh, I don't know. I, I use all the stock lines sometimes that I... You know, you start out saying... Um, uh, any questions, uh, you know, how do you do it? I did it very well or, mm -hmm. or whatever. And I threw, th threw those out after like the first five years after I had my own chops. But now I'm back again saying, you know, those were funny because they were good lines and I took them out because I didn't want magicians to say, oh, he's so stock and yeah, he's yeah. doing all those lines. Like, care. you know, yeah. and so, and I threw them back in now. And mm -hmm. it's, they just roll because I've been doing them for 25 years. Yeah, and I play it off kind of as a joke. Yeah. Todd Oliver told me that. He's like, I do stock lines in my show, but I kind of do it as a kind of a sarcastic little, you know, yeah. inside joke that I know exactly. it's kind of. But uh, no, people love that stuff. Now, there's been a lot of press. I was just reading an article about a show that opened up in uh, Vegas. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't want to say uh, his names, but it rhymes with Riss angel mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh but a couple magicians here in town are having a big problem with him taking material oh. uh allegedly and so do you get ever get that i mean do you have a lot of people because you guys were on um i think the first time i ever saw you was were you on world's greatest illusion or um not world's yeah, greatest, world's greatest uh, magic 
World's Greatest Magic, and I love those. I used to tape them always throw the VHS tapes. That was tapes. back when we had VHS tape, and those yeah. are your treasures in the corner of your room, all these tapes. It's like, uh-huh. I got all this material. <laughs> yeah, but you did, I remember you guys doing your mentalism mm-hmm. act on there, right? Mm-hmm. The comedy mentalism, yeah. which I thought was brilliant, yeah, and I love it. Uh, but then I started seeing other people doing it. Yeah. yeah. And did you have a lot of problem with that after you're on the TV? I did at that stage of my life, but now it's like if somebody steals it, more power to you. You know, I, I used to go crazy, like you said, when there's magicians in the audience. If I was doing an outside show and I saw a camera recorder, uh-huh. I would like go crazy. I would, would mess up my lines because I'd see a young guy. And now I see it, and it's usually not even a magician. It's somebody that really likes the show. And they're probably right, taping right. everything on park. And so I just, and those are the same people now that come up afterwards and they say, we really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, I, I just want to thank you. And they're, they're the ones that have the camera cards. 20 years ago, I would have stopped the show. I would have said, please, just enjoy the show. I'll give you a free DVD after the show, but please don't sit in the front row with that camera uh-huh. in my face because it's very distracting and it's at the expense of everybody else here because it's throwing me off. But, um, yeah, no, I, I had even lawyers, that would, uh, friends that were into law degrees, and they said, hey, I saw this on YouTube. They're doing it word for word. And uh, I said, well, I'm not going to chase them down. Once I did go to a show where they were doing it, and I said, um that comedy mental telepathy um i actually wrote probably 80 percent like 20 percent is like uh ventriloquism lines and things, mm-hmm. things like that like a, but he said no 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 we saw this on tv yeah. and i said that was me yeah. and this was up in uh uh pennsylvania it was uh what's the baseball player's name it was a town it was uh something hope or something like that but anyway mm-hmm. it was a small town and they were doing bus tours, and he didn't expect me because he says on TV. But those TV shows, they brought people in from everywhere. And, yeah, yeah. And, and that's why I said I replaced a magician that was on that in Guam when when they had to do that. Uh-huh. I went out to Guam to replace replace him. So. Yeah, I mean, you never know. I mean, I had that happen with. I was doing a lecture a while back on create being creative, mm-hmm. uh, coming up with material, not necessarily for magic, but creative thinking. And I had somebody steal my whole lecture, like literally take the lecture notes and change the name on it. So I showed up at the convention in Texas about two years ago and went to the lecture and then said, you know, I'm interested in what your source is in this. Oh, I him hawed around. And then I said, because it's me. I wrote the whole thing. Here's the original. And he was a little shocked. So wow. it, it's fun to confront people like that, I think. But, you know, it happened with YouTube and stuff, though. You can't really... Uh, prevent all of that. Mm-hmm. There's so many people. The only time I say something at a show is when it's very distracting. If somebody's filming on an iPad, it yeah. drives me crazy. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. people and, can't and see. And for the people behind them, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's why you see, need to see my new act, because it's all based on people recording at shows. Oh, really? Yeah. I do a whole bit where I take somebody's cell phone and teach them a lesson about recording things in public. Oh, and, very cool. Uh, very so, cool. Yeah, it's it's fun. But uh, so you're out here at the Playhouse at Silver Dollar City for the rest of the well, not for the rest of summer, just two more weeks. Right? Uh, this two is more, July. Two more weeks. The 11th. Um, like a week and five days, we'll be here until Saturday. I think the twenty third. Mm-hmm. Well, we always talk about things that uh, visiting entertainers like to do in the Branson area. So what do you like to do? You mentioned six. You like the oh Hay yeah, goods? we like six, and my mom was just in, so she wants to see them. We saw six. We do uh, uh, Hay Goods. I love Million Dollar Quartet. I it was seen just that, like yeah. a Broadway show, and I they need a they need a plug because they were so good, but they had like maybe three hundred people in the room, and it probably holds a thousand. Mm-hmm. But it was handpicked. These guys come from all over the the country, all over the world, and they say you're the best, Jerry Lee. You're the best, Elvis. You're the and they sing and they act, and it's just. It's just it's just great. You gotta see it. That's my favorite thing so far. We saw Moses, mm-hmm. and then you know, like we just make the rounds of the restaurant. We love the our Thai Thai for Thai food. Oh, that's we where love we always eat Momos like now is our hang for sushi. Uh-huh. We like level two. I yeah. finally made my visit so that now I get my own steak knife there. Oh, um, they bring out the little rack of them and exactly. let you pick. Yeah. Now that I, you know, two months when I. They will have my name on my own. So when you make your reservation, they bring out your steak. So, <laughs> and then um, oh, we like Baskins uh, oh, yeah. for for lunches, and it's just the, it's all about the food. But you know, it's my favorite place to work is Silver Dollar City, and my wife, it's her favorite town in the world. Really? So we got a condo over at Eagle's Nest, mm-hmm. and when we're not here, we rent it out. Mm-hmm. And sometimes mm-hmm. when we're here. We don't rent it out because it's that time of year when it's, you got to make your, your your bread between you know, June, July, and August. And right, right. other than that, people are just coming in like once or twice a month. So a couple of times, we didn't even stay at our own place when we were here in the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but um, no, it's just it's just a beautiful, fun place. What's well, constantly changing? They're yeah, adding it's... things like crazy. Because mm -hmm. on our kids show, Kids Connection for the Vacation Channel, watch it three o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, take the kids out and do all the new things. So they've done the little scooter cars. Have you oh. seen the little red cars that go around town? They're little tiny scooters. Oh no no no! You mean on the street? On the street? Yeah yeah. Okay. They're like little two seaters and stuff. You and your wife need to do it. Oh it's okay okay okay. Uh, we did that, but there's all the zip lines now. Okay. And you've been coming for like ten mm -hmm. years. We talked about yeah. me too, and it has changed so much oh my goodness I, I remember coming out 20 years ago just on a vacation with my brother and we came across from Ohio and 76 was just as slow as it was but here in the middle of 76 you've got a Rolls Royce with Bobby Barasini and a orangutan sitting next to him what and like a real orangutan yeah because he had a orangutan show oh. he had his own show in Las Vegas for a long time and then he came here and he partnered up with Kirby Van Birch and then since, since then uh, he's gone, but that was when Jim Stafford um, mm -hmm. and I saw um, who's the guy that wrote the streak and all those. Uh, Ray oh, Stevens. Ray, Stevens. Ray Stevens. Yeah, he He's still comes back every once in a while. And I went in the RFD. It was packed to the back of the room, and I loved the show. I mean, he uh -huh. he did uh, all, all the all the funny songs. He was like the um, Yankovic of of his era. Yeah, you know, yeah, just doing goofy songs. I remember his infomercials. When I was a little kid, yeah, and they would play the streak song. I'm like, what yeah. the heck is this? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, and and that was when there were more um, theaters, uh, or probably less theaters, but maybe more shows or right, right. fuller shows. But um, no, it's 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 changed a lot. But even in the '90s, when we came back the first time, it was like it was the heyday. Yeah, and I can see it coming around again. Mm -hmm. I was. When they called me about working here, I had never heard of Branson. I had no idea. I actually saved the, uh, I had an answering machine then, mm -hmm. and saved the, the recording because I thought I was working for Richard Branson. And I had just read a book about Richard Branson. <laughs> Why don't you do a show? I thought they said for Branson, not in Branson. And so I'm thinking, oh, here we go. Like Virgin Airlines, like the whole deal. This is it, uh -huh. finally. And so I came down, or I researched a little bit. As far as I knew, it was a place that my grandma went on vacation once every couple years came mm -hmm. back with terrible shirts and we would throw them away without her knowing right. it and so i researched and i thought country music what in the world you know yeah. so i come down with a country music act like i put together this country music are you a musician no okay. magic show all country based with lassos and all this stuff they saw it and they're like uh no we don't want uh, country music so we had to change the whole act literally overnight before i started uh, performing on the showboat but wow. i had never heard of it but now there's so much more for the kids to do and stuff here because uh, boy when i came down i remember driving down the strip and saying i am never going to get bored here there's so much to do mm -hmm. same thing happened when i owned magic shops I, at one point i owned like 15 of these in little uh, malls and stuff, and I remember going through the food court every time, going, "I am never going to get sick of eating here." <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah, right. like a week and later, you weeks, can't, yeah, yeah. no more bourbon chicken for me. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I enjoy it here too, and I, I, I uh, remember the first time we came here, we felt the same way, and I still do. I still have things to do. I still, I've done this a couple of zip lines, but I still uh -huh. wanted to do the the high speed go karts. Um, we filmed an episode before. that was crazy. Yeah, and and well, we, you know, I've every time. As, to, as a magician like you got a, a road job and you're saying, oh, I'm getting really close to Pigeon Forge. I want to stop in there and spend a night. And you take the racks and you grab off everything there and you go like, this guy's here, this guy's here, this guy's here. And I, I did that probably 20 years ago here. And then more recently, like 15 years ago, every time I go down to Miami, if I had to drive down, I'd go to Myrtle Beach mm -hmm. and I grab all the rack cars there. And then about four years ago, we got an offer to go to Myrtle Beach and they put the same, same idea as here. They just had a theater and they were going to do a magic show. And so we got that, we, we knocked that out. So last summer, the summer before that, and the summer before that, we were at the Palace Theater. Mm -hmm. And now I'm done. But you know something? If they asked me to go back there, it would be nowhere, it would be fourth in line from Branson. Yeah. Branson, anytime they ask us to come back here, it's just like, I'll put everything aside. Yeah, yeah. I really like it. I mean, we work all over the place too, cruise ships and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we really enjoy it and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's home. Yeah, that's cool. Well, it was really good talking to you. Mm -hmm. So thanks for hanging out. And uh, you need to go see a couple other shows in town, though. I got some for you. Uh, okay. Forever Young, you need to go see that show. Is it good? You heard of it? Oh, yeah, yeah. A couple of the guys from the showboat were in that and stuff. So. Oh, okay. And I think I just read an article about that. Um, yeah, they're really promoting it right now, so okay. probably. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will do that then. And uh, go see some magic shows. Too. I will. Do you? Maybe I'll catch you Do you go to other shows a lot? 
I let me see. I have. I've gone to San Reza and I've gone to see. Da, 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 da. Well, I saw Rick Thomas before uh, uh-huh. when I was out here in the winter. Uh, actually, that's probably the same time that I saw you in the boat. Because mm-hmm. I know that Carol, my wife, took a picture of you floating. Oh yeah, now lobby. I remember when you guys came to the boat because I had no idea you were going to be there. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to throw your show off by saying there's a magician in the audience. Oh no, it made me really nervous. You could see me doing world renowned. Right. It's not like Jim Carrey's there. <laughs> or uh, <laughs> Drew. Uh, what's yeah, it? Drew Carey. Drew Carey's there. Yeah. Uh, but I don't really go to other shows very often. The only time I go is if I'm interviewing somebody. But this time I missed your show because I went to the wrong place out here and couldn't get in the door when so, uh, well you're welcome to stay but, for the 2 30 show if you like i'll do that they probably wouldn't like me missing the showboat though what time so, is it i gotta be there like after three okay. so that'd be a little tight but anyways thanks for talking with us pleasure and christopher james come out and see peter gossamer at the uh, silver dollar city playhouse don't go to the wrong place the show is about 45 to 50 minutes long and it's at 11 30 in the morning and at 2 30 in the afternoon and the final show is at four o'clock Sweet. Well, thanks a lot for talking with us. This is Christopher James with All Things Branson. Bye-bye.